Hello students, so welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to study about one plant growth regulator that is chiprylic acid. So let us see first the discovery of the chiprylic acid. Okay, now see first of all it was discovered in 1926. This was discovered in 1926 by one Japanese plant pathologist. Okay, the Japanese plant pathologist and that pathologist person was Kurosawa, okay? Scientist was Kurosawa. What he observed that uh, he was working actually on the rice field. So while working on rice field, observation was this, that some rice seedlings were growing taller than the others. So he observed it on the rice field. Okay. And what do you observe? Some seedling, let us assume these are the seedlings of the rice. So some seedlings are only short this way and some seedlings are going very tall. They are going very tall. And he found the plant which is going very tall. This is going very tall. So this plant was having the infection of fungus. Let me draw this is the fungus infection is showing there. Okay. So this plant was infected by the fungus. And it was found that this fungus is actually Gibrella fujicoria. This fungus was Gibrella fujicoria. Okay, so this was the fungus name. The Gibrella fujicoria, this is the fungus and uh, they found that this fungus, because of this fungus infection, the seed plant is going very tall. And later on, what they did, they called this disease. First of all, this plant is going very tall. They gave the name to the disease that is known as Bacane disease. They gave the name to this disease Bacane, which is also known as foolish seedling of rice. It is also known as foolish seedling of rice. So this is the name they gave to the disease. Okay, let me just once again focus what I try to explain you. Okay, first of all, discovery was done by one scientist that is Kurosawa and the person is Japanese plant pathologist. Pathologists are those which study the disease and he's studying the disease of the plant. So he's known as plant pathologist. And what he observed, he observed in rice field. Some plants are normal height but some are going abnormal height means they are becoming very tall and the plant which is becoming very tall is found to be affected by fungus which fungus fungus is Gibrella fujicoria okay and they gave this disease name is Bacane disease that is foolish seedling is it clear up till here is it clear now what they did they isolated the chemical released by this fungus Okay, and they applied this chemical to the healthy plant. Let me show you it. Now see, this is the chemical they have isolated from this fungus. Let us assume they have isolated one chemical from this fungus. Okay. And now they are applying it to the normal plant. Means normal seedling plant, they applied it. This is normal plant. normal healthy plant when this chemical was applied when they are applying this chemical on this plant when they are applying the chemical then they are finding immediately after the application of chemical this plant is becoming tall okay it means this chemical can bring the stem elongation they identified this property so change is occurring and it is bringing the stem elongation So this is the way how discovery was done. Now, which, what is the name of this chemical? What they have identified? This chemical is known as gibralin because this chemical was isolated from fungus gibrella fujicoria. So chemical, what they have isolated is known as gibralic acid. Is it clear? So this is the chemical they have isolated. Now 
Now, chiprelins are terpenoids. Okay, they are di terpenoids. And with nearly carbon containing, with nineteen or twenty carbon, this much they are having, and they have gibbon ring also. They are having gibbon ring with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So first, chibralic chibralin was first chibralin. What they have isolated, they gave the name as chibralic acid three. Okay, this is the first they have isolated. But till now, we have isolated how many? We have isolated hundred chibralic acid, and they are named as GA one. GA two and so on, GA three and so on. This is the way they are named. Is it clear? The first now, what is its nature? Right now, I wrote as it means nature is they are acidic in nature. So, which is the first chibralic acid? Your first chibralic acid is GA three. Till now, how many we have isolated? Hundred chibralic acid and nature is acidic in nature. Okay, now what is a precursor from what we can prepare? So precursor for chibralic acid is acetyl coenzyme A. Precursor for chibralic acid is acetyl coenzyme A. Please, it's important focus it carefully. Acetyl coenzyme A is the precursor from which we can make chibralic acid. So I think so. Discovery and uh, how many types of gibralic acid are there? This much is clear to you. Now let us see its physiological effect. First physiological effect is increase in the length of the stem part. Okay, increase in the length of shoot system. I am emphasizing shoot system. It means it is not effective in the root system. they are showing their effect only in the shoot system means they will increase the length of uh, stem your uh, fruit size they can increase okay they can increase the leaf size so we can use them in increasing this way they, they are effective only in the shoot system and mention it properly please no effect on root system no effect on root system so they are effective only in the shoot system and not effective in the root system by applying we can increase the length of the part of the shoot system second it is responsible for balding this is again very very important concept this is an example right now i've taken the example of cabbage okay this is a cabbage in which is taken an example and if you see in this cabbage in this first diagram right now focus only on this you are not finding internode elongation okay so internode elongation is not there and they are actually showing a rosette habit internode elongation is not there right now internode elongation is absent and they are in the rosette habit rosette habit it is there and just before flowering just before flowering when they have to make a seed see here now see internode elongation has occurred see different different leaves are uh, they are changing so internode elongation occur and this internode elongation is occurring just before flowering just before flowering and we call this process as balding so all the plants which are having with a rosette habit your example right now in the diagram i'm showing you cabbage is examples are cabbage also your uh, cauliflower 
and wheat. These are the few examples in which the plants which are with the roseate habit, they will go for internode elongation just before flowering. This is a normal process which they do. And we have observed that by applying gibralic acid, we can induce the bolting in the other plants also. So we can induce the bolting by applying the gibralic acid. Is it clear? The gibralic acid is responsible for bolting in those plants which are with the rosette habit. So first physiological effect is increasing in the length of the plants, especially of the shoot system. And second effect is the bolting effect. Now let us see the third effect. Third effect is a seed germination. Let me explain it. Try to understand this is one seed, okay? And you know the monocot seed, in case of monocot seed, the cotyledon is known as scutellum. So this is the term used for the cotyledon of monocot, okay? And this is the colleptile. So now see here, from this scutellum, check carefully the diagram, chipralic acid is coming. Check chipralic acid is coming, which is acting on this aileron layer, aileron layer, which is proteinaceous in nature. Okay, so this layer is proteinaceous in nature and on this it is acting and making this aileron layer to release hydrolytic enzyme and this hydrolytic enzyme will then act on the endosperm, will act on the endosperm, which endosperm which is storing starch so that the starch can break down to form sugar and other compounds. Okay, let me explain you once again. Try to understand this diagram. This is a diagram which I've taken from the net. See here. This is your monocot seed, you know very well. This is your aileron layer. This is aileron layer. Okay, and this is your single cotyledon with epicotyle, and this is your hypocotyle which is covered by colleptile and this is covered by cholerizer. This is the endosperm part. And this is the single cotyledon that is known as scutellum. Clear with that? Now try to understand the diagram. From here, from the aileron layer, okay? Now see one thing. This gibralic acid is released from here, enters into the aileron layer. This is gibralic acid which is released from the scutellum enters into the aileron layer. Let me just highlight it. This is the aileron layer. And then this aileron layer will now release enzyme. And this enzyme will break down the starch, which is stored in the endosperm. And this enzyme will break starch to form sugar, okay? And sugar is required for the glycolysis process and everything so that root formation can be initiated. When the root formation is initiated, means cell division is going on. Cell division means energy is also provided. For cell division, energy is provided. So for all this energy, the sugar is available. So we say gibralic acid helps in seed germination also. I hope you are able to understand the diagram. Once again, let me revise it. See here, this is the single cotyledon. Single cotyledon, which is known as a scutellum. This is aileron layer, which is proteinaceous. This is endosperm, which is a starchy. So scutellum will release the gibralic acid, which will enter into the aileron layer and then aileron layer will produce enzyme. This enzyme will break down starch to form sugar and sugar will be then broken down by the cell during respiration to produce ATP and ATP will be then used at the time of cell division. Okay, they can be, they are used at the time of cell division so that cell division can start. When the cell division start, then the root germ comes out and we say they are helping in seed germination. And when I'm saying they're helping in seed germination means they are breaking the dormancy of the seed. Dormancy means a condition in which seed does not germinate. It is a condition 
in which seed does not germinate. So it means they are breaking the dormancy and they are promoting the germination of the seed. So three physiological effects are there. Now we will study where we apply them. Application we will study now. Now we know very well that their physiological effect is increase in the stem elongation. So we are using them to increase the fruit growth. Fruit growth. And we observe that the size of an apple is increasing when you apply gibralic acid. Size of apple will increase. Okay. The length of the bunch grape. The length of this uh, grape bunch is also is increasing. Then it is responsible for the sugarcane production increasing. Sugarcane production is also increased by the applying of the gibralic acid. And it is observed that nearly 20 tons per acre. Okay. How much we have increased? We have increased nearly 20 tons per acre. This much sugarcane production has been increased by the applying gibralic acid. Then they are increasing in the malting process. Malting process is increasing. Because they speed up malting process in the brewing industry. Then they are responsible for quick maturity in juvenile conifers, means in the conifers, means gymnosperms. Conifers means gymnosperms. So juvenile maturity is increasing. Juvenile means young part, young plant. So by applying this, we are finding that it is increasing the Maturity period is increasing. Okay. Then we are finding they are also delaying in the ripening. And uh, thus we can uh, make, the make the fruits stand on the tree for a long time. We don't need to pluck them immediately. So and thus fruit can be can be left for a long time on trees so these are the areas where we can use them now let us see the bioassay three bioassays are there number 1 dwarf maize test dwarf maize test it means if suppose the plant is genotypically dwarf, if plant is genotypically dwarf, you apply gibralic acid, the plant will become tall. Then second is dwarf P test. Same concept, if you apply gibralic acid in genotypically dwarf plant, the plant will become tall. Okay. Then third is induction of alpha amylase in barley endosperm. For this, again, you remember the same diagram what we have studied it. This is your uh, aileron layer, once again. Okay, beta. And uh, this is your uh, endosperm. This is aileron layer. And this is your single cotyledon that is known as a scutellum with the, all these things called reptile polarizer and all. So gibralic acid is released from here, which will enter into aileron layer. And then aileron layer will produce an enzyme that is known as alpha amylase. And alpha amylase will be produced to break down the starch. So simple we can understand, the alpha amylase, if it is coming, 
in the endosperm it is responsible for breaking down of the starch and if this process is going on it is under the influence of gibralic acid so these are the three bioassay for gibralin now let us see the mind map for the gibralin now see this is the complete mind map of what we have discussed today the gibralic acid what are they they are acidic in nature total how many we have discovered till now 100 we have discovered but first is your gibralic acid 3 okay what are the functions they are responsible for stem growth they are responsible for bolting bolting means internode elongation rosette plant will do just before flowering then they are responsible for seed germination also now where we can use we can use them to increase the size of the fruit we can use to increase the sugar cane production also malting we can increase it by applying gibralic acid we can delay the ripening so that our fruit can stay on the plant for a longer period and we can bring about the quick maturity in the conifers bioassay dwarf maize test dwarf pea test means genetically the plant is dwarf but if you apply gibralic acid they will become tall and Induction of alpha myelase in the barley endosperm. If alpha myelase is appearing, it means working is going on. It means gibralic acid is produced. So these are the, this is a summary or you can say this is a mind map for entire topic what we discussed today in this video. Thanks for watching.